Father, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, you may be seated. Now, Abraham tithed. Amen. Now, I'm going to show you why tithing makes you wealthy. What, what are the questions? No, because it's a long thing, so I, I will just do it a little bit. So maybe if I have some of the questions, um, or just one question. I think basically that it's in the Old Testament. Okay. All right. So now, tithing, okay, is um, important and mysterious. Okay, paying tithes. Now, it is mysterious in the sense that it creates wealth. Wow. So I want to show you why tithing makes a person rich. Do you understand? Yes. Not even from the Bible. <laughs> so if you understand it, you would want to do it. Amen. Amen. Are you there? Yes. yes. So, tithing, there are people who talk about tithing. So it's an Old Testament law, blah, it's a, under the law, and so on. But it is not just something that is in the old, uh, under the law, the law of Moses. But people who are not under the law, like Abraham and Jacob, actually paid 10% of what they had to the priests. Mm -hmm. That was in their day. But it was, it was in under Moses that he just made it a law. Do you get it? So, offering to God 10%, is something that is all through the Old Testament. You see the teachings on it. Now, the tithe is a miraculous thing when you give up. I'm trying to unravel the mystery. Why would somebody who pays tithes become rich? Why? Are, are you there? Yeah. Yeah. Because Jews are rich. Like I was telling you the other day, they are, in, they are the richest community in America. I told you their income, it was one, if the average American is 100, they are, theirs is 178. Mm. Do you get it? Yeah. They outstretch the next one, who is 132. That's the Japanese group community. And down to 62, which is the blacks in the Hispanic forest communities. Now, the big question is, why would somebody who pays tithes become rich? Why? I mean, is there anything that would make somebody who pays tithes Get rich as against somebody who doesn't pay tithes. Do you, you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, if it was a practice that makes somebody rich, do you see? Wouldn't you want to practice it? I want to do it. Do you get it? Yeah. Now, the people who have thought about these things, like the Jews, they have said in their doctrine that this is things that they have practiced for many years, okay? And that Jews give, even when it doesn't make sense. Preach, they Preach. have been taught to tithe over the years. Now, there are several reasons why somebody who pays tithes would be rich. Number one. Now, wealth is mysterious. Amen. Are you there? No, that's not, that's not one of the reasons. I'm reading something from my book. 
Wealth is mysterious. How many know that it's mysterious? Creating or generating wealth is even more mysterious. What you may think makes somebody wealthy is often not what has made him wealthy. Do you get it? One of the mystical contributions to wealth creation is the giving away of wealth. Simple arithmetic, giving away money, should actually reduce your wealth. According to arithmetic. Amazingly, giving away wealth seems to create wealth. This is a reality proven by many secular and historic facts. Alright? In this chapter, I will share with you why wealth is created by people who tithe and give away money. Okay? Yes. Number one, the reason why people who tithe create wealth is because number one, the first reason is that tithing Christians fulfill the law of humility which creates wealth. Amen. Amen. Now, recently I passed through a bookshop, a secular bookshop, which was talking about, which was selling secular books, not a Christian book. And this book was talking about these financial things, books and so on. I had some number of points as to how to become a wealthy business and I was surprised one of the chapters was humility yeah. <laughs> a secular book humility and they also showed that all organizations that have become proud have lost their wealth they say when you become proud like let's say some of the car companies in America they say oh we can't change this is how our cars are. And this and that. We are the oldest car making up. Then another one comes in. And then before you realize, now Koreans are the number four. After, was it Passat? And, well, Prince, you were telling me. Volkswagen and Toyota. And what? Toyota. 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 Yeah. Toyota. Yeah. Toyota. yeah. You get it? Making of watches. Switzerland was the number one making of what? maker of watches. And one day somebody came and showed them a technology, quartz technology of how to make a watch. You must always make a watch with these things that go around. That is whatever. They said, this is a Swiss handmade, whatever, this, that, that. They didn't do. They got to get to Japan. And they became the number one because of what I have made watches available. And they lost it. So pride has always reduced wealth. Humility has always made people wealthy. Because it makes them, right, like one of the reasons why black people do not become wealthy, let's say in Africa, is because black people often are not prepared to roll up their sleeves and just get down to hard work themselves. Rich. They always have an office, executive, car. When you give them an office, they buy a car, driver, this, that, whatever. And they don't, they don't actually get down to the work themselves. Do you understand? Okay, let's build the road ourselves. Let's be on the road. Let's be on the move. Let's do this. No, as soon as the executive, car, this, that, whatever, and so on. And so, they never, you, you can't easily create wealth that way. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, if you sit in an armchair, you know, you never know what is going on, the real cost, the real whatever. They just want to go for loans from abroad and bring a foreign contractor to come and do it. You take, for instance, Ghana, we don't have a lot of roads. If they were to just, you know, do it themselves, but they go to school, they learn it, yeah. engineering. Yeah. But, you know, to practically get down, 
and do things. People don't want to stay away. Just sit in the room and sign invoices, sign vouchers, approve of loans, approve of money, and that's all. That's how you work. And then the driver drives you home. Do you get it? Yeah. But right now, donkey, when he has a crusade, it's white people who come and drive his trucks. Driving up a track is not for a, an inferior human being. The white people come and drive. The white people come and set up the scaffolding in Nigeria. And the places are there. Yeah, they come and do it themselves. They don't leave it for anybody. They drive the track themselves to the places that they, when he had one terrible accident, some people died. It was white people who died. You see, but it's like we if we are doing a crusade, so the drivers should go, it's like the inferior ones. Do you see? And the drivers who say, well, we are the big shot, we don't drive trucks, we don't do such things. Do you get it? Yeah. So, but that doesn't create wealth. You see, creation of wealth comes from being practical. And often being practical means being humble. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh, you don't understand what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I mean, if you want to be sure that you have money, you have to drive a type of car drive this type of car, live in a certain type of house, it doesn't make you wealthy. Because because you have to impress people. Do you get it? You have to live a certain way. You have to live in a particular house. You have to drive a particular type of car. You have to do things. So, so much of wealth that could have been real, whatever, it does not happen to you. Because you have to do all these things to show that you have money. Yeah. Now, whenever you pay your tithes, you have to come, you may be a millionaire, but you can't be a priest who you may think to be a fool to even be a priest because you will not even allow your child to be a priest. Maybe a few of your children say they want to be part of Say, no, 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 no. Not unbelievers or Satanists, so Christians in the church and pastors, they will not like their children to be pastors, pastors and full time pastors. You understand? Yeah. My father used to travel, and when he travels and he comes, he will go to the Anglican preacher. I remember one time, so he has this gift for his priest. His father he went all the way to the Anglican. I was with him in the car. He says he has this present for the priest's child or the priest something, the packet that he had brought from abroad. I mean, it was so important for him to go and see the priest to give him that gift that he brought from abroad. You see, but when it was time for me <laughs> to be a priest and to live from gifts like how he was bringing a gift to the, to the priest. No, 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 my son. Not, not me. A priest who lives off collections. <laughs> you see, so many of us, we, we want them to exist, but we, in our mind, see it as an inferior something that you know, you shouldn't really be condescend to. So whenever you pay tithe, you humble yourself and you go to the priest yeah. and you say that God Almighty in heaven created me and has brought me here. It's not my own wealth. Yeah. But you see, the fool says that there is no God. Yes. I have created my own wealth. I work hard yes. myself. I work hard. I've come to Australia. I've suffered here. I went to school. I've done my master's. I've done my PhD. I've been in I've suffered. I pay my mortgage. I do this. I do this. I do this. I work hard. I get up early. I go here. I do this. So it's I, 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 I. Why should I take out of that and come and get to God? But God is saying that the fact that you have even breath to breathe, it comes from him. That's right. There is a God factor in him, the ability to work hard, the ability to even pass exams, the ability to be well, the ability to go to work, the grace of God that made you come to Australia, the grace of God that gave you the position that you have, that you acknowledge that, oh God, just like the Muslim would acknowledge as he's in that place, he bends his head down, eh? in the, uh, 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 Business class or whatever department, you see the person is he, he, he's not a poor person, but he said, God, 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 God is great. God is great. But Christians, they don't think God is great. They don't think God has given them what they have. They think they have given themselves what they, what they have. By my strength and my power has made me who I am. That's why Christians don't pay tithes. Yeah? That's why Christians don't become rich. 
That's why we are here. If I do fundraising, I say that I want 10 people can give $5,000. We'll be sitting here till Jesus comes. Yeah. Don't have money. Don't have money. Yeah. Because that God factor, you find it in Jews, you find it in Muslims. Look, let me show you something. When I went to, when I went to uh, uh, Israel, they were all wearing this small cap on their head. So I asked one of them, why do you wear it? He said, because there is somebody above me. Wow. Mm. There is God above. That's why we wear that thing. Mm. It shows that there is a higher power. Mm. I went to New York to buy some, something for the church. And I was negotiating with the guy. And I said, I, 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 I came from here and I want to do. The man stopped me in the middle. A Jew. He said, don't say I. He said, I belongs to God. Say we. He don't say, I said, I is God. I am, I will go, I will do. He said, human being, you say we all, by the grace of God or something. I don't say, I will, I came, I will. It belongs to God. The, the use of the word I. Don't use other word I. I am go, I am the. You are what? So a lot of Christians, we don't have that thing that Jews and even Muslims. That's why the Bible says, blessed be the God of Shem. Mm. That Shem, when Shem worships God, he worships God with a certain passion. All the nations that came out of Shem, mm. they have created a strong religions in the world. Islam, Christianity, even Buddhism comes from that section. Yes. Shem's God is blessed. Shem's God is blessed. It's like if God, I mean, if Shem has a God, Shem's God will be blessed. It's standing by his strength. When a Christian is conscious of the fact that promotion comes neither from the east nor from the west, but from the Lord. That's why I constantly keep on saying we are blessed. Hey, what am I doing in Australia? Mm-hmm. One day, I went to London with my wife. And we went to a restaurant. Mm-hmm. And we sat down to eat. Then the food either came or had not yet come. And I said, let us pray. And I said, oh Lord, we thank you for bringing us to London. What a privilege, what an opportunity is to come here. Oh, God. Thank you very much. And I was like, when I opened my eyes, I saw her look like a short smile. I said, oh, why are you smiling? She said, you are cute. <laughs> and I said, why do you say that I'm cute? She said, it's as if I've never been to London before. But I was born there. <coughs> That's where I was born. You see, but I knew. First of all, I could have even not been born there. Mm-hmm. Because some of my sisters and so were not born there. Mm-hmm. And, but I was born there. Yeah. As soon as I was born, then they left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My parents came to Ghana a few months after I was born. Wow. I was a few months when they carried me to Ghana. So I could have been born in Ghana, but I was born there. It is very important that I was born there. Yeah. <laughs> 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 You see, it's a fool who doesn't know. As you go to, as you go to work and you collect a pay, mm. it's, it's, you are chopping, you are chopping that. You, you don't know that you have even become proud, and it is that very pride that kills wealth. Yeah. So wealth is created in tithing constantly makes you present it. Pastor, thank you. God bless you. And that's why I, I, was in, I was interested on the $4 billion that Jews gave. I was wondering, what do they give? Offering this, no. $2 billion to the priest, the rabbi. Wow. Yeah, they bring $2 billion every year to the synagogue. It's wow. most more synagogue. <laughs> <laughs> to the rabbi who is there, who is praying. Yeah. Oh. Hey! It's like, God, God help me! God help me! God help me! That's why I'm here. That, that's how they think. You see, that's why you are not rich. Wealth is created by humility. Yes, it's 
degraded by humility. But when without humility, we cannot rise. And even the secular world, they know that without, as soon as you become arrogant, like McDonald's, they said when they became arrogant, no other companies started to take over. Nando's and others were taking over from them. <laughs> as soon as you give yourself small, no. But Bible says riches do not endure to every generation. It doesn't just keep moving down. You, when you come, you have to be humble. Otherwise, you lose it all. Wow. So every time you pay tithes, Pastor, God bless you. Through the grace of God yeah. that I'm here. Yeah. You are going to work yeah. this month. God bless me. I had two thousand dollars and I brought two hundred and tenth of it to God. God bless you. And there are seven types of giving in my book. When you give, you know where it is going. When you give the Jews, they have said they call it Chedeka. Seven types of Chedeka. When you give, so when you give and you don't know where it's going, that's another level. And when you give, you don't know who you gave it to. That's the highest level. You are going to higher levels. And when you give, you know the one you are giving to. You give, you know what is going to be used for. You give, you don't know where it's going. You give, you don't know who it went to, how it was used. You don't even know who you gave to. You are going higher and higher. <laughs> hey, juice. That's why you see. There's a wealth that, and that's the wealth that God wants to bring to his people over the years. Amen. As we tithe and tithe and we constantly tell Lord, whether it's hundred dollars, it is from you. If I come, I come to Australia, you know, and even somebody smiles at me, I say, God, that somebody smiles at me, it's an honor. Yes. I mean, the people that I'm working with, nobody greets them. Yeah. I'm not saying that nobody know they do their pretend show, but I realize that people people will greet me. They show me a kind of respect or kind of I mean it's a, it's a great, it's a blessing. Yeah. You when you go to pray, does anybody come to meet you at the airport? Yeah. <sighs> should I not say thank you? I shouldn't say thank you. I should I should start to say yes, I'm the type who was born for people to greet me. Yeah. That's the beginning of my fall. Yeah. How many realize that? You see? Yeah. That is what that's so what the type constantly causes you to be humble. Wow. Wow. Constantly. Yeah, wow. Constantly. It causes you to be humble. It's like God. One day I met a guy who doesn't respect anybody. Yes. I went to visit him in his house. When he came to open the door, he was only wearing pants. <laughs> yeah. He doesn't even bother to wear. He came out with his white pants. He said, Yes? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> what do you want? I was on visitation. He doesn't respect anything or anyone. Whoever like man, woman, whoever like can open the door with his pants. <laughs> and then I saw him one day and I said to him, Brother, so and so, you must pay your time. He laughed, you know, there is a kind of laughter. Somebody has a kind of a smile, a kind of a laughter. Do you see that? It's like some cackling, we call it cackling laughter. Cackling. A cackle. It just cackled. And then he looked at me and said, I should pay that. And he asked me, Do you know how much I earn? Yeah. Do you know how much I earn that I should pay that? But you see, the ability to go to work. It comes from God. Yes. So you play with it and see yeah. what will happen to you. Yeah. Yeah. Are you listening to me? Yeah. This is yeah. why when somebody continues to pay tithes, he continually demonstrates his humility and his remembrance of God. Yeah. That's how Jews are. Yeah. <laughs> now, if you will not allow tithing, to keep you in constant remembrance of God, God has other agents who can remind you. Should he send them? This guy who doesn't respect anybody, 
and who opens doors with panties. <laughs> he had a terrible accident with his car. Some assaulted everything. And he came out of the car like Spider-Man. Have you seen where Spider-Man comes out? <laughs> or Batman. And he came out and stood by the car. Like that. Nothing happened to him. So what I saw, I thought that that accident has ministered to him. <laughs> but rather, his, his arrogance was now increased. <laughs> Uh, you are feeling sleepy? All right. His arrogance was, was multiplied. But you see, then he had another accident. That one, even his arrogance became more. But there was a third agent. When that agent came, then he totally changed. Yeah. Because now he could no more work. He never was. since that since he was he was met by that agent, he has not worked again. Mm -hmm. yeah. He has never worked again. And the first time he paid tithes, he came to me and said, Bishop, I have come, I want you to see that I pay my tithes. Pay my tithes. Show me this tithes. Wow. You are blessed. Amen. 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 So tithe pay constantly reminds you. Oh God, thank you. Oh God. Oh God, thank you. Oh God, thank you. Oh God, thank you. Some of you are called pastor today. Pastor. When you analyze yourself, should you be used to such a name to use? Should such a name be used to refer to somebody like you? Or even today you are found in a church. Every day you enter the church, you say, Lord. Oh God. I thank you. But you see, we constantly don't remember. Yeah. And so, prayer. And we have to learn it from Muslims, from Jews, who don't forget their God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, humility. Amen. Amen. Number two. Tithing. Christians fulfill the law of sowing and reaping, which creates wealth. Amen. 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 Sowing and reaping embodies the oldest law, the oldest, oldest, oldest law of wealth creation is sowing and reaping. Harvest, sowing seeds, reaping harvest. Can somebody open the doors a bit hard here? Amen. Why do I call it the oldest law of creating wealth? When the world was created, before there were industries. Huh? Before there were industries. Before there were factories. What was there? Farms. Where you sow and you reap. That's all. That's the basic form, format for creating wealth. The sowing seed and harvest time. Mm. Do you understand? Mm. So, the laws of sowing and reaping, which are a whole lot of laws, are activated by a tithe. Because tithing is a form of giving. So, you activate the oldest law of wealth creation. It's the oldest law. Plant a seed, three months, six months, one year, you reap it, you harvest. Right. It's the oldest way of getting money. Yeah. Yeah. Since the world was created, before factories, before industries, before high tech, before computers, before anything, if you want something, plant a lot of seeds here, all will grow. You have corn, you have this, you have whatever, cassava, cassava leaf, everything, then you have your wealth. It's the oldest law. So every time you sow, you give your time, you activate that law in your favor. How many would like to activate that law in your favor? Yeah. 
So you activate the law of humility and you activate the law of sowing and reaping. Number three. Tithing, amen, fulfills the law of prioritization. Which seeks Bible said, they that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Amen. Amen. Those are the old laws of sowing and reaping. And, you know, we can go a lot into that, but that's for the sake of it. Amen. Amen. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Amen. When a person learns to pay his tithes, he learns to put God first. He acquires the habit with dealing with the most important issues first. This habit of prioritization will extend to other areas of his life and lead to success. This is one of the ways by which tithers become wealthy people. Because tithers learn to put the first thing and after that this and after that this. There will always be a certain order in your finances if you learn how to tithe. Now, many of us are poor because we didn't know what were the priorities. What do I mean by that? When you were in school, what was the first thing to do? Academic work. Yeah. But you see, some of you were not serious in yeah. school. You didn't know what was first and what yeah. was second. Yeah. You are throwing short put and javelin. Yeah. You are running 100 meters. You are running 5,000 meters. Yeah. You are going for morning trotting. You are doing beauty pageant. You are doing whatever. You see, this is not the first reason why you came to the school. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So you don't, you don't know what are the priorities. When you, so many of you have come to Australia, you don't know what the priority in Australia. You don't know what's priority in Australia. You do a whole lot of other things. After you have been here for eight years, you realize that, look, if when I first came to Australia, I had no certain things, I would have done this and I have done this and I have done this. It would have really helped me. Because you, you, you don't know that in every sphere of life, there is always the first thing that you have to do. Yeah. And the Bible teaches us the tithe is, is called another name for tithe is first fruits. The first that belongs to God. The first and the best fruits that belong to God. You give the first fruits to God, not the last fruits. God gets first things first. He doesn't get the leftovers. Amen? Amen. Many of you don't want to be the second wife. You want to be the wife. Is it not true? Yeah. You want to be the first and the best and the only. Yeah. You don't want to be among the number, number two, number three, number four. Yeah. You want the first, but you don't just, you say, but you are a wife, accept it. You are a wife, you are Mrs. So-and-so. You have a child with him. You are Mrs. This. You don't want that because you want to be the first. Yes. It's important to you to have the right position. Why do you think God wants you just to give anything that you want? God also wants to have the first part. It shows your respect for him. And then it shows you that you, you know what to do first. Wow. One of the things that have brought me wealth is putting the first thing first. Yes. It's true. What, what I think is best. Today, when I was in school, Achimota School, the school that I went to, is a difficult school to do well in. Because I've never seen a school that has more activities. Volleyball, soccer, hockey, basketball, cricket. I've played all this. 100 meters, 200 meters, 400 meters, javelin, short put, swimming. I mean, swimming, we have the swimming pool. Everything under the earth can be done in that school. And it is done. Squash, piano playing, piano school, cross country, 5,000 meters, 1,000 feet, athletics, morning drop. There's activity of one. So the school is, has a good name in Ghana. But the truth of the matter is, few people in that school actually do well. Like that's one of the high used to be called the Prince of Wales College. The truth is that. Out of a large number of people, but few actually excel. Because if you don't have concentration, you will not do well. So when I went to that school, in 
from the fifth form, you do your O level, then you come to sixth form. Out of all the many people who were in the school, in the sixth form, very few of us were able to enter this school. And then out of that sixth form group, only two of us were able to enter medical school. Okay? Although it has a big name, <laughs> prioritization is a very important thing in the ministry, in, in life. And I, I, I decided that I'm not here to learn short put, jab I couldn't run. I couldn't do all the things that they were doing. You get it? Yeah. I said that I would do my academic work. People laugh at me. Today I can employ all those guys. <laughs> See, many of you don't know what is first. First, you have to be educated. Not some of you, because you are not educated, you have to work one and two, one and three till you die. <laughs> do you know one and two, one and three? Sweating. You are always have to be a waiter. You have to be a cleaner. You have to be a driver. You have to do some of these kind of jobs. Forever and ever and ever. Because during the first part of your life, when you should have prioritized that this is my youth, I must be educated. And then take it seriously. So now you have no education. And when you are a certain age, even when you go to school and you learn, you don't understand it in the same way. Yeah, you can't even pass exams. And when you pass, you are seen as a mature student. Yeah, I'm not understanding a lot of things. Are you guys not from Sierra Leone? Many of you are from Sierra Leone. My father went to school in Sierra Leone. He went to school in Furabe College. Yeah. That's the school that he went to. And then after that, he went to England. You know? Yeah. Uh, many of you didn't go to Furabe College. Did you go to Furabe College? No. <laughs> See? You have the school there, but you didn't go. <laughs> yeah, what were you doing there? You had the same school. <laughs> My father traveled from Ghana to Sierra Leone. Go to Furabe College. <laughs> we're training to be rebels. <laughs> There's only a, a time in which you can do certain things. Yeah. If you don't do it at that time, yeah. after that time, you can't see it. Yeah. That's it. So priorities make a person work. So my father told me, what you do in the first 25 years of your life will determine how you the next 25 years of your life. And it's true. Priority, what you, when you learn, Charlie, at this time, nothing else is important, only this. Then after that time, you do it. You know, after that, you do the next thing. But you don't do it, you know. So priority, when you are in business, you ask yourself, what are our priorities? What are we doing? What are we have our healing Jesus who say we're doing? We had old cars. Every day we were repairing, repairing, repairing. We were more than a mechanic shop. <laughs> then I said, no, our priority is to win souls, not to be repairing cars. We have tools, we have this, we have, every day we are repairing this, repairing this, repairing it all the time. So I said that it's our priority to win souls or to repair cars. Then I took a decision that no, our priority is not to be re good repairers of cars. Our priority is to win souls. So I got rid of all the old cars and replaced them with new ones. Now we don't go to Twitter again. Only concentrate on the crusade and the soul winning. Yeah. Priority is always making successful. People who do not understand that, you understand, do not do well when it comes to uh, life. Yes. Yeah. It's true. Like me, you know, if you watch me, I don't come and hold a convention here. Three day miracle convention in Sydney. Bishop presents Bishop Dark Word Mills. Miracle signs and wonders. Night of bliss. Night of this. Night. No, I just come and have camps. But you see, through my camps I've been having, we have more than 1,160 something churches. That's right. All over the world. Yeah. Because I, know, I also know my calling, and I know what I'm supposed to do, and I leave the rest for others. Yeah. Yeah. I have other friends and other people who can do those night of uh, extravaganza nights for you. you know, I can do it, but that's not what I'm going to do. I don't have to choose what I'm going to do when I come to see you. See, when I have a miracle to say, I, I do miracles and all those things, I do it over there. 
Yeah. But I can do so many things. But which one will I do? You get it? So riches can people, they understand our priority is to do this. This is what's important for us now. That's why when I see government officials who just sit in the office to receive people are queuing outside to see them. African government. Uh, if you are a minister, you see plenty of people outside coming to see you. Relative this, one, this, one, this one. Me, I don't have that. I don't sit down for people to come and greet me. Or to come and see me about something. Hey, I have what I've decided to do today. I don't want to be pulled around by people. So I know what is the first and important thing I have to do today. They cannot come about 38 people come and decide what I should do. With my time. <laughs> yeah. Prioritization always creates wealth. So no wonder wealth cannot get down. One day I took a, 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 a pastor to go and visit a very high level, make a high level government delegation. Hey, and this pastor, when I got there, all Minister of Agriculture was there. Minister of Women's Affairs was there. Minister of this, all government, I was asking that. A pastor is coming to see the president. Even why should the president have time to see this pastor? Number one. Why should Minister of Agriculture be the Minister of this, Minister of this, this, and everyone? No, they have nothing to do. That to be sitting in the afternoon for pastors, that when you see the news in Ghana, you see everything. So, singer, a singer has come, a person who says he wants to do an orphanage has come, and they are there. They have time to meet all that stuff. There's no road in the country, there's no light, there's no water, there's no this, there's no. They, they are not. It's that that's not what is their priority. No wonder the whole nation goes. Have you seen? Bring Tony Blair or Prime Minister Gordon or whatever your Prime Minister is called. What is your Prime Minister called here? Yeah. Kevin what? Rod. Rod. As you see that he's seen that the delegation from Ghana has come. He's coming to meet them about uh, granite farming. A pastor has come from uh, 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 Korea. A pastor has come from this is guys greeting. Call on the government. Call on the president. Call on the president. Have you seen some? There's nothing like that here. But Africa, we have it. Call on this. This is the Pope has called. The priest of this. Reverend this. Call on this. Call on. They are sitting there to be called on. They don't know what to do first. Have people call on you. Do you not know, have nothing to do. It's fantastic. Amen. Amen. So as a pastor, in any sphere of life, knowing what you must do first and what is your priority always will make you a rich person. When you pay tithes, you have learned first. Me, and if you give me hundred dollars. First, I pay tithe. I pay tithe even in my house. I have my own offering basket in my house. If I have, if somebody gives me something, I remove the tithe and put it there before I accept the money into my section. I cannot accept any money into my section of money without paying the tithe. I'm afraid of that money. Hey! And I will show you why non tithers become poor. No, of why non tithers are under a curse. That's it. Are you there? Yeah. Uh, what time do I have? Am I finished? No, I have 30 minutes. My sister, you are finished. Why don't you go to the back end of coffee? Right here. Yeah. You see, the prison is full of what? Innocent people. <laughs> No, she's like, this is you say, That's why, you see, married, there are always arguments, but there's no referee. When you say, no, it's not true. They 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 Number four. <laughs> Tithing makes you rich because you fulfill 
Let me see. I'll give you. Some. I think I'm going to skip some because of the way you are sleeping. Let me see. Okay. Next one. Tithing creates, tithing fulfills the law of emulation, which creates wealth. Almost all the wealth in the world is created by emulation. Emulation is copying. Copying. Copying somebody who is successful. Okay. So many people are successful. All right, if you want to be successful, copy them. That's what the Koreans did. They copied the Japanese cars, and today their cars are even maybe better than the Japanese cars. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. yeah. Their cars are just as good as, or better than, at least as good as. It's true. It's fantastic. How did they do it? By copy. They copied Opel. They copied Mercedes and they copied uh Hyundai copied who? Is it Toyota or I don't know, they copied somebody. They copied. They copied somebody. Exactly. That way I know they copied Opel because I bought one once. And it was exactly Opel. The shape, everything. No there was no change in anything. <laughs> The Opel, the reason in it, and I bought a car, Sanyong, the inside the car, inside the engine, so they said this, but I thought that they couldn't make the engine, so they just make the body. That was the first part they copied. Wow. They copied the body part, they made the body, and then just imported the engine and put it in. <laughs> they understand it. Then after they made the engine, they learned how to make the engine, and they put it in. It's great. Everybody who has done well has done well by emulation. You copy somebody. Who is successful? All right, emulation. Now, there is a book called How Rich Nations Became Rich and Why Poor Countries Stay Poor. There's a book like that. And in that book, one of the chapters there is the answer. The answer to that question is why rich countries become rich and why poor countries stay poor. The answer to why rich countries, how rich countries became rich, the answer to that question is the word emulation. It says copy. Basically, all rich countries have copied the other rich country. Yeah. Yeah. That is why the wealth in the Western yeah. world is almost equal. Yeah. The roads are the same. Yeah. The development is the yeah. same. Yeah. The style of the cars are the same. Yeah. When Toyota makes Corolla, Hyundai will make this. This one will make this. All the same. They just, when I see what you do, I do that. So that's what makes you, that's what makes them rich. But these days, they are trying to tell the developing countries, don't copy us. You specialize in farming. You make uh, uh, tomatoes, you do your know, corn, your know, cocoa, and you know, so we will make cars. Do you understand? But the, the countries that have become rich have not obeyed that thing. They have emulated those. And Abramovich, an American econ economist, he talked that strongly, surging forward and catching up. That was his principle. Search forward and catch up with those ahead of you. Yeah. If you see somebody doing something, don't leave him to go. Search forward and catch up. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Are you there? Yeah. So in 1957, uh, America released what they call the Sputnik uh, uh, craft, which went into space. You get it? And when America saw, they were surprised. What? They've gone to space. So America didn't say, okay, you specialize in space technology, we will go into farming, wheat, and so on. In 1958, they set up NASA. Have you heard of NASA? Yeah. NASA will sends rocket. It was set up a year after 1957, when these people went to space. They said, no, Charlie, search forward and catch up. See what they are doing, do some, and do it better. So they set up NASA and emulated the Russians, copied them, did this, and did better. Oh. Do you get it? So everybody who has become rich has become rich in the same way by copying somebody who is rich. Yeah. Now, one of the, the wealthiest groups of people in the whole world is the Jews. And one of their major practices is tithing. Yeah. 
And if you want to copy a rich person, one of their practices is tithing and giving away wealth. The rabbi is the teacher. Why do Jews give away money even when it doesn't make sense? So they have learned somehow there is a way in which giving away money makes you wealthy. Mm. Huh? Are you there? Yeah. yeah. So, surging forward and catching up. Amen. Amen. Right. Stand to your feet, everybody. Lift your hand and just thank God for his blessing, for his word. Sit down. I just want to move on. Curses that follow non tithers. I've skipped the rest of the other ones and I'm just moving on. Curses that follow non tithers. And then we are going to go for lunch. Right. Number one people who do not pay tithes are cursed with the curses of Malachi, the prophet. How many have heard of the verse in Malachi? Will a man rob God? You have robbed me. Wherein have we robbed you? You say, see, and the sister said, ah, Am I sleeping? You say, where, 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 when did I sleep? And you are saying, Ah, when did I rob God? And you get it. In tithes and offerings. Amen. And he says, You are cursed with a curse. For you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Amen. Amen. Number two. People who do not pay tithes, how do you know what is a curse? A curse is frustration. The world is run by tired people. <laughs> the richest Australian, they, are, they work till 10, 11, 12. Whether you are Australian or whether you are this, or whether you are a doctor, whether you are a laborer, whether you are a carpenter, whether you are a refugee, always you sweat before you eat. If you are a pastor, look at me, I sweat, I'm tired. Yeah. yeah, I'm tired. I preach all the time. Go here, do this, do this, do this, do this. Because no matter what I have, done, it always ends in the same thing. You will sweat. You may do this course. You may go here. You may do that. This is the end of it. It's the same. So that's how it curses. You may go up, you come down. It will come to that point. Yeah. You may do this business. You may do that business, but you will sweat. Do you understand? Yeah. Yeah. So when you are cursed with the curse of Malachi, the prophet, hey, you go up, you come down, you do this in Belgium, you, you come to Australia, you do this, you do this course, you get this job, you move from here, you go to Brisbane, you go to Melbourne, you go here, you come here, you move to this island, you go here, you work for America, you work for Japanese, you work for Korea, you work for Ivory, ah, it's always at the same place. Zero. I'll marry a married man. I'll marry an unmarried man. I'll marry a virgin. I'll marry a non virgin. It will save it to come to the same place. Now, that's what it means to be cursed. It comes to the star same end that has been predicted. It always done away. In sorrow shall thou conceive. Her desire shall be to her husband. That thing I thought it was, I thought it was men who like girls. But when I read that, I said, girls like boys, pa. Wow. Hey, girls, they like boys, who? They are attracted like flies. You see them fly. I cannot 
stand up myself. I like you. I want you. Do you like me? Will you come with me? Will you take me to your house? Will you go with me? Hey! Girls like boys. And I, as I wonder, what are they attracted to? Huh? Sisters, is it true that girls like boys? Oh, look, see, prison is full of fun. The truth, Pastor Kogo, I don't think they are telling no, the truth. No, 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 no. They are innocent people, too many innocent people. Yeah. <laughs> One day, I was in my church and I did an altar call. All those who want husbands for marriage should come. I close my eyes. They all came. So I went out and I knew that when I open my eyes, I'm going to see ladies. Yeah, yeah. Then I saw some aunties. is true. When you go up, you come down, you go to the side, it comes to the same. You know, it's a case that has been spoken. Your desire shall be for the man. Hey! Come on, so as I saw somebody who has given birth to about four children. She's coming for the altar call with young, young girls who have never had any other. She's joining them for the competition. of a case. Because no matter the maneuver you make, it ends at the same place. Hey. One day, I had a certain pastor whose father died. Yeah? An elderly man. But whose, 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 whose father's, his wife died. The father's wife died. An old lady. An old lady. She was almost 70. Then I saw one of my church members making some maneuvers. <laughs> Another auntie with her cloth. <laughs> she was now making a maneuver so that the man whose wife has died, an elderly man about 70 years old, will see her. <laughs> And choose her. Now, when he didn't choose her, she was upset. And I think she even stopped coming. And she was trying to make certain moves. Hey! So you see, a curse. That's why you don't want anything to do with it. Anything that brings a curse, be careful of it. Yeah. Because. And, and you see, Jews, they respect blessings and they respect curses. Mm. That is why Isaac blessed his son. And he thought he was blessing Esau, but he was blessing Jacob. So when Esau came, he said, ah, You are blessed. And then Isaac said, Yes, I have made you his servant. Oh. He said, I have given all your relatives to him as servants. <laughs> I have sustained him with bread and wine, yes. by the words that I have said to him. That his son said, Is no one blessed? Is there nothing for me? Have you say anything good? You they believe and they understand and they respect. Yeah. Mm. You go up, you come down. You go up, you come down. Say, Israel is blessed. You kill six million. You persecute them. You hate them. You do God, you did everything still. Say, You are a prince. All nations will be blessed in you. You will be a blessing to men. So please, anything you can do to extricate yourself from a curse, do it. Amen. Pay your tithes. Amen. Even if you are in public 
of international church. You are in Presbyterian church. You are in Methodist church. Whatever church. I tell you, don't forget about light up. Don't think about this church. Think about yourself and think about God. Don't think about a church. Think about your, I'm talking about a basic Christian activity of your life. It's not about which church you belong to. Just think of it's for you, it's not for the church. The church works without your time, with or without your time. The church has been working without your time anyway. Think of yourself. Don't think about anybody. Oh, if you think somebody is looking for something for you. <laughs> Number two. People who do not pay tithes are cursed with the curse that comes on thieves. Every thief is cursed. So when you don't pay tithes, the curse of thieves comes on you. Because the Bible says, you have robbed me. What is the curse of thieves? The curse of thieves is found in Zechariah chapter 5. Verse 3. And if you don't mind, you can write it down. And remember, this is the curse of all thieves. So those of you who are thieves, you stole to be here. You are a thief. There is a curse over your life. Yeah. Those of you who are thieves. But some of us, we are thieves. We have not repented of our sin. Zechariah chapter 5, verse 3. He said, Then he said unto me, This is the curse that goeth forth over the face of the whole earth. For everyone that stealeth shall be cut off, as on this side, according to it. And everyone that sweareth shall be cut off. Verse 4. I will bring it forth, saith the Lord of hosts, and it shall enter into the house of the thief, and into the house of him that sweareth falsely by my name. It shall remain in the midst of his house, and shall consume it with the timber thereof and the stones thereof. This is the curse. It says it will consume everything in the house, including the timber and the stones. When you are a thief, a curse comes over your life that consumes even the wood and the stones in your house. You may think that you have got something free, but that curse comes on you. Now, when you don't pay your tithe, not only are you cursed according to what Malachi said, but generally the curse that comes on thieves comes on you because you are now joined the classification of robbers. Are you listening to me? You have joined the classification of thieves. People who steal from God. Number three. People eh, who do not pay tithes are cursed with the curse that comes on those who dare steal from God. Hey. Stealing from God is different from just stealing. When you steal from God, your stealing now moves into another realm. Huh? Wow. wow. You may steal. Now you are stealing from the wrong person. It's going to turn into something else. Amen. Amen. Brother, over there. You, you, you there. What's your name? Yemi. Huh? Yemi. Yemi. Take off your shoes. Take off your shoes. Throw your shoe. Throw your shoe at me. No. I didn't say throw to the front. Throw it at me. Like I'm trying to hit me with it, but not too hard, please. <laughs> but don't hit the lady here. No, no. Oh, no, no. Okay, my brother here, take your shoe off and sit down and throw it at me. The way the, the, the reporter threw his shoe at President Bush. <laughs> President Bush was standing here. Now, this is what happened to President Bush. Now, you see, this guy has thrown his shoe at me, but he's not going to be arrested. Because he just, he just threw it at him. Brother Dark. Now, when you throw your shoe at President Bush, you go to prison for the same thing. Yeah. So that's why I said that you are cursed with the curse of a thief. Now, it's going higher because you are stealing from God. So you are, you are not going to have an additional trouble for doing that stealing from God. Not from a man. The Bible says the eyes 
eyes of the Lord are everywhere, beholding the good and the evil. Proverbs 15, verse 3. The eyes of the Lord, they are everywhere. So now you are having the curse. Malachi has proclaimed a curse. Zachariah has proclaimed a curse on thieves. That thieves shall have the timber and the stones in their house to do. Then number three, you have gone further to steal from God, which is now going to activate something else, which I don't know what it will be like. Huh. The next one is you are going to those who don't pay tithes, tithes are cursed with the curses that come upon all who break the law. The laws of God. You see, there are laws that God has created. The law of gravity, law of this, law of that, and so on. They are laws. They are principles. God has made them. It's not you who are coming to reinvent anything. If you jump off a high cliff, you fall down and you obey the law of gravity. Yeah. If you break the law, you break, breaks you. So when you break God's laws, that the tithe belongs to him, you see all kinds of curses come upon you. And I'm going to give you, it will give you, number one, 15 curses upon children, material prosperity that you must watch out for when you don't pay tithes. When you get the book, it's all in the book, you see the 15 curses on material prosperity. Number, the next one will give you 30 more curses of sickness, crop failure, war, captivity, business failure, and poverty that you must watch out. There are 30 of them here, all from the Bible. And the next one, 26 new and repeated cases of defeat, captivity, sickness, persecution, and insanity that you must watch out for when you do not pay tithes. And what again? Ah, it's finished. <laughs> hey! You play with it and see. That's why you see that you are, you, are not, you are not being released into the blessings of Abraham because you are toying with God's money. Every time I talk about this, I remember a day when they took the offering and the ashes were walked out of the church with the offering basket and some money fell on the floor. It was once like one dollar, red note in Ghana, one dollar. When I was preaching, I saw that note and I said, hey, look at this. This is a dangerous money to pick and a dangerous money to use. Something that has been put in the basket. It's a dangerous one dollar to pick. God's money. You are eating it. You are gone shopping. Eh? You are gone shopping with God's money. You are in the supermarket buying hair to do your hair and you are not afraid of 15 cases of captivity, defeat, business failure, crop failure, and insanity. You are not afraid of it. You are moving in town saying you are going shopping to buy new shoes to go where? Where? The cursed shoe. <laughs> Now, number five. But you see, well, th this book, this is a book that will publish soon. When it comes out, I say, why tithing Christians become rich and how tithing non-tithing Christians stay poor. Wow. That's wow. the title of the book. Wow. Uh, hey. Number five. <laughs> People who do not pay tithes are cursed with the curse that comes on those who repay God's goodness to them with evil. Hmm? There is a curse that comes. There are 30 curses in this category for ungrateful people. Number one, set God should not hold his peace again. God should be quiet again on your case. To set a wicked man over him. Psalm 109. Let Satan stand at his right hand. Let him be condemned. Number four. Let his, number five, let his prayer become sin. Number six, let his days be few. Number seven, let another take his office. Number eight, let his children be fatherless. Number nine, let his wife be a widow. Number ten, let his children be vagabonds continually. Number eleven, let his children beg. I didn't say it. We see the Bible says that for those who repay, God has been good to you. And the return, the thank you, the thank you from God, for God, for how he has brought you here, how he has saved your life, how he has blessed you and put you here, the thank you to God is, is I don't know God, I don't know him, I don't remember him. 
I don't care. And I will not even bother to say thank you. It's the Psalm 109. All these ones are there. 30 of them on some book, ungrateful people. You will receive all the curses of that come upon ungrateful people. Sure. Me, I was giving you principle that create wealth you were sleeping. That's why I've come to these cases. And I, this, one, this one will wake you up. Now you are not sleeping again. You have been awake during the wealth, wealth creation and we are moving to cases. Let them seek their bread in desolate places. Let strangers fall his labor. Let none extend mercy. Let none favor his children. Let his posterity be cut off. Let their name be blotted out. Let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered. Let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. Let them be before the Lord continue. Let the memory of them be cut off. Let cursing come to him. Let blessing be far from him. Let cursing come to him like water. Let it come to him like oil in his bones. Let it be unto him like his garment. Let it be his ghetto. Let this be the reward of the adversaries of the world. And the reward of them that do not fear God and that do not reward the good that God has done. You reward the good with evil. That's why when a, when a father is cursing you, eh? because you know one day my mother, I went to the, where, the world hospital. Very dirty. And I told my mother, I, the place is dirty. When my dear touches up, I don't like that place again. I want to wash it. You know what she told me? She said, oh, but you have slept there many times. I said, me? That hospital, I've never slept there before. She said, oh, you have slept there. She said, I slept there with you many nights. That pediatric ward, when you were a baby. I slept with you night after night. You were sick many times. I was, she, my mother is a white lady. She came from Job. She slept in that hospital. Very dirty place. It's the same after today. So I never knew this what my mother has done for me to save my life. So if I wake up today with arrogance, I cannot remember anything. I'll come and manifest. I can't say thank you. I have nothing to say. Thank you for what you have done for That's how when your, if your mother says to you, you will be tired in this life. See, you are finished. Tiredness will follow you all the days of your life. Tell you. But you see, they are just talking that you will be tired. Before you realize something different is happening to you, your whole life is, is turning into a sea, treble clef. You know treble clef. Something that was going straight to it has become this way. And now it has gone this way. <laughs> the next one. Number six. People who do not pay cares are Cares with the curse of a closed heavens. It says, and thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass. And the iron that is, the earth that is under thee shall be iron. You are, you are going to sow your seed in iron. And the heaven is brass. When, when God said that, I will bless you when you pay your time, I will open the windows of heaven. That's why you don't want it. God for God to open the windows of heaven. You want the heavens over you to be like brass and the earth under thee to be like iron, iron, iron. He said that, oh, bring out the tithes and I will open the windows and pour you a blessing. No, huh. I don't, when I, when I don't pay tithes, nothing happens. Be there. As you go, by the time you realize, you analyze that the earth, the heavens above is more than, is more than brass. <laughs> it's like a shield. There is no water that comes from there. And under is more than an iron slab. Yeah. Are you there? How many are you? Let me see. No, but I'm seeing how many there are in total. Eight. Oh, there are only eight. We are lucky. <laughs> hey. Hey. Number seven. People who do not pay tithe are cursed with the curse that comes of those who forget God. The 
But I said, how shall I put thee among the children and give thee a pleasant land, a goodly heritage? And I said, thou shalt call me my father and shall not turn away. Surely as a wife treacherously departed, Jeremiah 3.19, departed from her husband, so have you dealt treacherously with me, O Israel. A voice was heard. Hey. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel, for they have perverted their way and they have forgotten the Lord God. A curse that is going to come upon you, crying, bitter weeping, for those who forget and have forgotten their God. Hey. Hey. That's one of the things that made me very sad about Obama. During his victory speech, he never mentioned God. He never thanked God. He was thanking his little children. He was thanking his wife. He was thanking his campaign manager. He thanked everybody, but he did not thank God. From that moment, my eye tell, I said, ah, you are black. Even Michelle Obama, when she went to the, uh, during the uh, inauguration, different, different, that she had, they had a dinner. She was standing there with one of her new dresses. And she said something. She said that there is nothing in my background that should make me stand here as the first lady of America. There is nothing in my background. And there's nothing in Obama's background that should make him stand there as the president of the United States. So I thought that the first person that he will remember is God. That God has done something for him. But he was thanking, he promised his children that he's going to get them a, a, a dog. He's going to do this. Thank you for my campaign. Thank this guy, thank this person, that person. Oh, I'm waiting because I watched it live. Mm. I was watching the thing. I said, ah, it's not possible. It's not possible. He said he goes to church. He's a Christian. He's, he has a pastor. He said, no, God. Do you think a Muslim will not stand there and say, allow us to As I stand here, it is by the grace and the mercy of God. Oh, what a shame. What a shame. You see, when you forget, when you take your salary, and the first thing you are going to do with is something else. It's not God that you remember. Them. You are blaming Obama. What about yourself? When God present gives you salary, gives you job, gives you money, he's the first person remember God. Or God, you come and you lie to him and give him some small say, Lord, take hundred dollars. No, hundred dollars is not your time. You just found some change, put some fifty dollars, twenty dollars, and put it and say, Let me go and give it to God. Forgotten. You forgot him. Obama, Michelle Obama, all these kind of people. God lifts you up, God helps you, God praises you. You forgot him. That's why every time I see God, I'm blessed. When I come to my meal down, I say, Thank you, thank you, God. I thank you, thank you. Oh, oh, why should somebody honor me? Why? Who am I? Who am I? I cannot forget. He said, if I forget, he let my right hand forget how to eat. Hey. That's what the psalmist said. If I forget the old Jerusalem. And the last one, as we are going for lunch. People who do not pay tithes are cursed with the curse that comes upon idol worshippers. Who put money before their service to God? Worshiping idols is the number one sin that brings the wrath of God on the people. Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image, an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsman, and putteth it in a secret place, and all the people shall say, Amen. Can you imagine if you make something else a God? Huh? Something else that is not God, you make it your God. Huh? Your computer, brother. Do you have animals in your computer? Put an animal here. Any animal. Quick. Do you have a rat, cockroach, any animal? Is 
if you don't have say so that we don't waste our time. All we are saying is don't waste our time. I know my priorities. I don't need your picture, but if you have it, it's better. Ah! You got a cockroach? The best I want is a cockroach. Yeah. Have you found any animal? Or a bat? Or a bed? There's a what? A dead bed. Real dead bed. No, because maybe it has got a bed flu. Maybe it has got a What's that? What's that? Rabbit. rabbit. Okay, give me what other animal you have? No, rabbit. Give me rabbit. Small one. Give me a small animal. Okay, put it on. Hey! hey. Now! Brother, oh. give me your name tag. Supposing I now name this rabbit and I say this rabbit is Jeffrey. This is Jeffrey. Is it nice? I, I wish you had a cockroach or another animal. I had a cockroach or a lizard. And I say this lizard is Jeffrey. Is it a nice thing? How do you think God feels when you bring a uh hand? -huh. What animal is that? A cow. A cow. Oh. I want a cuckoo like this. <laughs> and I put it, I say, that's Jeffrey. And they give it to you as a present. Jeff, Jeff. Or oh, your name, what's your name? Huh? Kumba. 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 I say, this is Kumba. Well, these are nice animals. You know, very friendly with a bull. But when I bring a pig and I say, this is Kumba. <laughs> And I say it is, it is, it is Kumba. Is it nice? How do you think God feels? Eh? How do you think God feels when you take, give me one dollar or ten dollars, five dollars, give me money. When you take that one, you say you are God. Ah! You have, you have made me. You have made me in Australia. I, I will obey you. Show me. And you say, this is God. You worship it. Do you think God is happy with you? No. That's the curse, the curse that comes on people that worship idols. It's the same. When you go to Africa, you see all animals mm. in Britain under them. You know, this is our God. An antelope, rabbit, cockroach, crabs. They say, this is God. They worship it. Do you think God is happy? No. It brings curses. And when we in the Western world, we lift up the money and say, I will die for you. People do everything yeah. for money. Yeah. One day I saw a certain uh, lady, she had only one eye. She had covered this eye with blood. She went to Iraq and they shot her eye. So her eye came out. Now she has put a glass, then covered it with a black thing because the whole place is poor. So she used the black with a strap here. Whose man is this? She uses that. I said, hey, people can do a lot of things. So they give up their life for everything except for God. The real God, they will not die for him. But they will die for money. And you put God. It's a curse. It brings a curse. So, dear friend, don't be an idol worshiper. When you pay time, you break that thing. Say, no, money is not worship. I don't worship money. Yeah. I give to God the first. It's nothing. Calculate your income minus tithe for today. If you earn 2,200, your income is 1,000. 2,200. No. It's 1,980 or so. That's your real income. Calculate your life with that. 
90%. Don't calculate your future, your plan, your budget, your rent, nothing. When you go to a new job and say, we have a new job for you, we have an offer for you, we can give you 5,000. Immediately, you should tell, recalculate it. My offer is 4,500. That's a new offer. That's my money. That's my actual money. <laughs> are you listening to me? Oh, when I say, are you listening to say we are listening. Are you listening to me? We are listening. You get it? Don't ever bow. That's why I don't want ever to preach because of money. Go somewhere because it's rich. That's why I prefer the part. I feel like safer where there is no money than a place where there may be some financial benefit for me. I feel always not. Hey, maybe that's where I'm going. Maybe that is, maybe deep down in my heart, perhaps after I'm starting to follow something like that. Hey, I'm afraid of that. Do you get it? Wow. wow. What do you think? Oh, wow. So, God is going to bless you. Yeah. I was giving you the principles that I would release, oh. but you couldn't receive it. So I switched it to these ones. Yeah. Because you can understand captivity better, hey. crop failure, yeah. insanity, <laughs> business failure, and other forms of cases. That the Lord shall bless you. Bless you. Okay. Now you see, Abraham was a tither. When he saw a priest, no, he gave. He, there's no other record of a priest in Abraham's life. But when he saw a priest, he paid tithe of all that he had earned. He said, No, once I see the priest, not that when I see an orphanage or when I see a, a project. Uh, and to help somebody's eyes. Or when I see a project to do humanitarian good, no. when I see my priest, when I see my church, I will honor God first. After that, other things come up. May the Lord bless you Amen. with the blessings of Abraham. Amen. In Jesus' name. Abraham, stand to your feet. Blessings of man. Oh, come for your shoe. The one who threw it. The one who threw shoe at me. Ah. Ah. Forgive you for throwing your shoe at me. Even though I do not have armed forces to arrest you, may God have mercy on you and bless your shoes in Jesus' name. Amen. Abraham's blessings are mine. Abraham's blessings are mine.
May your life end in the same way. In a good way. In a blessed way. In the name of Jesus Christ. Of Nazareth. Father, thank you for this great blessing of Abraham that has come upon us. In Jesus' name. Amen.